YouTube, this is CarcoLad88 coming to you with another video. Today I want to do a discussion video talking about some of the new cards that have been announced on the uh, YGO organization for various products. This new um, dimension box that uh, the OCG is getting in their anniversary pack. So let's go ahead and get started talking about some stuff. So first of all, you get all these neat reprints of the uh, Dimension Dragon. I think it's cool that they got new artworks. Um, some of them are not as great, like the original ones look better, but All I've Mentioned Dragon looks pretty good. Uh, Star Venom looks pretty good, I think, but it's just nice that they got ultimate artwork. Um, I don't feel like talking about Tuning Magician, but I do want to talk about Speed Drift. So this card is about one line of text away from being either really good or really bad. It says, well it's a quick play spell, which is really good, but it says, if the only monster you control is a tuner, especially someone on level 4 or lower is a speed droid monster from your deck, which sounds really good, right? And then it says, when that monster is special summoned, either player can activate cards or effects. So I'm either interpreting this one in two ways. Either one, as a result of the monster being summoned, if it has any awesome effects, like Terracon for instance, you don't get those effects. Or it says, or it means that neither player can respond to like that effect because like Terracon have a strong summon. But I mean, it is also cool that you can go and get like the K-Time Borister from the deck, that new level 5 is supposed to be coming out of the, uh, the manga. Stuff like that, that's pretty cool, but um, I don't know. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. I'm pretty sure it works out the the, uh, the first way, where it's like, you you don't get any, like, you can't get any on summon effect from Speed Royce. So it just, you know, helps you get more stuff on field. So that was initially all there was, until another card. Well... First of all, let's talk about uh, Iris Magician. So I believe that Iris Magician was revealed in one of the last two episodes of um, RV that just recently happened when they actually went over the, the history of the, the United World and uh, whatnot. Um, there was this part where Yuya was going crazy and going dark Yuya, and then something involving this card uh, happened. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think that that plays a part as to where that guy comes from. Anyway. So moving on, it looks like we get a new Predator Plant Fusion type monster that is uh, level 8. So that's good, that definitely makes Greedy and Fusion Dragon uh, easier summon because honestly I really wouldn't want to use Star Venom to summon Greedy Venom Fusion Dragon with the effect that it has. Um, so let's hope that this, uh, this does something. Let's hope that this does something. And yeah. Okay, that's it for this page. Let's move on to the next page talk about this stuff. I'm super excited, especially for this. For anybody like who's you know been watching my channel from like the very beginning, they know that Neo Spatians are my favorite archetype in Yu-Gi-Oh! period. So seeing anything that is a symbol of Neo support, I'm super excited for. So let's go ahead and get started. First we're gonna start with talk about uh Caligula, the Eidolon Beast, I believe is how you pronounce that. So it's a Dark Fusion Beast Monster with a thousand attack and 800 defense. Not very big, but it says that when you the monster card zone, each player can only activate one monster effect per turn. Also, each player can only attack with one monster during each battle phase. So that's very interesting. It has a Dark Door effect, and then each player can only activate one monster effect. That's definitely, uh, I don't know how annoying that will be. Just depends on how the rest of the deck shapes up, but that sounds pretty darn annoying. Um, I don't know how unfair that's gonna be, because I mean, I only have a thousand attack and eight hundred defense. It doesn't seem like that's the biggest, like the eat, like doesn't seem like it's the most difficult thing to run over. So only time will tell. But I mean, all this sounds really good on paper. <clears throat> Let's see. Moving on, we're gonna get to my favorite card, the card that I want to talk about. This guy right here, Elemental Hero, Honesty Neos. I like how they like, basically ripped this picture from the opening from Precious Time Glory Days. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I really dig that. Like, I'm gonna get like three of this part when it comes out, just because it exists. I love Neos so much. Um, anyway, so it has the same stats as Neos. Also, um, what episode did Jaden use this in? I can't remember. I know it was season four when he actually, you know, used Honest. Like, Honest came to him like early in the episode. He basically used it later in a duel. But anyway. Moving on, so it says you can only use each effect, or yeah, each effect of Honesty Neos once per turn. 
during either player's turn, you can discard this card and target one hero while you control a game playback attack until the end phase. So, obviously, it works like an honest, but this honest specifically for heroes. This is at least a one of in every hero deck, I believe, because now heroes have a way to search their honest. They can, like, just be called for their, for their own honest now. Um, at worst, it, at worst, it's an honest. At best, it's an honest. It's just a matter of whether you, you know, draw into it or whether you, um, end up searching this. So I totally think it's worth it. And it says during either player's turn, you can discard one hero monster that's card game attack equal to that monster attack until the end of the turn. Now, I, I don't foresee there actually being a way that you can uh, summon this in uh, most hero builds that are running around right now. I also don't see just in the whole slew of hero support how you would summon this period, but still nice that it has the ability to gain the attack of uh, other monsters. You can, like, discard Shadow Mist, buff it by a thousand, you can shadow your search. Uh, I don't know what else you could do, but, you know, it's, it's, it's nice that the options are there, I would say that. <coughs> I also think it's neat that you can actually run this in um, here in a, you know, anyone who's actually still running like you deck, you can still run this. Um, Prisma being like the main card in that deck, the biggest problem with Prisma is that it was really easy to run over and didn't stay on the field for more than one turn, but this definitely helps with that. So that's another little tidbit. Um, I really hope this means that either Neos is going to be getting retrained or if there's going to be like more like Neo Station support in the future because I would love for this deck to actually be playable again. Like, I miss playing Neo Station so much. Among other things. Going into Harpy Feather Storm. This card I feel familiar to. I don't know when I used the card, but like the picture with all the, the feathers and stuff looks very familiar. Or that's just what her Harpy Feather Dust is almost looks like. I'm not sure. Anyway, so. If you control a Harpy monster, you can activate this card from hand. If you control a wind, wind beast type monster, they get all of your opponent's uh, activated monster effects until the end of the turn. So I think it's really interesting that it has like a blanket effect. If you control wind beast, you can just activate this and then any effect that your opponent, the monster effects your opponent would activate during that turn, they don't get this effect. So I think that's really, really interesting. If this card and stone track card is going to destroy fine stone spark pick, you can add one harpy feather dust from your deck to your graveyard. That doesn't really mean so much to us here in the TCG. Does that mean that Harpy Feather Duster is coming back in the TCG? Probably not, but hey, for the OCG players, it's good for them. They can, you know, search Harpy Feather Duster. <laughs> Moving on to Chaos Scepter Blast, or Death Ultima. Uh, either of the, you know, two one. Interesting. So, anyway, this is the attack that's used by the Dark Magician of Chaos, of course. And Black Magician of Chaos. Activate you control level 8 or higher spellcast monster, banish one card on the field face down. Um, the only times I've ever seen this, um, applicable in, like, Dark Magician, most likely, <clears throat> is usually when you're about to OTK. That's usually the only instance where that seems to actually bring out Dark Magician Chaos. But hey, if it stays in the field, it's nice that you get a quick play that allows you to banish stuff. And, uh, does this target? Um, no. No, this does not target, which actually makes it pretty darn good removal. So, hey, if your Dark Magician of Chaos stays on the field, you have quick play non-target removal that you can activate at any time, so that's not really a good thing. If this card in your stone track card zone is destroyed by a fun card effect, then you test one Dark Magician of Chaos or one Dark or uh, Magician of Black Chaos or one Dark Magician of Chaos, ignoring some conditions. Ignoring some conditions is always a good thing. Where do you test one? Oh yeah, okay. yes, yes, good, 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 good. Alright, then we have Power Wall here. During damage calculation, when you would take battle damage from a opponent's attack monster, send one card from the top of your deck to graveyard for each 500 damage you would take so that the damage you take becomes zero. Hmm. So if I take 2,000 damage, I get to discard four cards. I get to send four cards from the top of my deck to graveyard. Take 3,000 damage, I get to send six. You could run this in Life 1, but then again, I'm not a fan of perpetuating anything that would make Life 1 more playable than they already are. Okay, Life 1. And let's see. Reprints, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, looks like that's it. So, once again, super excited for this. I really hope this means there's going to be more Neo Space, Neo Spatian stuff, stuff in the future. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about these cards. Are you excited for them? Are you not excited for them? Which ones are you excited for? I look forward to your comments, and I'll be back to you later with future videos. This is Parker Lab out.